St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by contribution from an anonymous donor from Dieppe, New Brunswick. This Mass is offered for our priests and civil leaders, for all the children of God, and for a renewal of faith in our world. On behalf of everyone across Canada participating in this celebration, our most sincere thanks. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace of God, the love of Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Today we commemorate St. Agnes, an early Christian martyr. As we begin our celebration, let us recall that we are in the presence of the risen Christ and that we do need his continuing mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty eternal God, you choose what the world considers weak to put the worldly power to shame. May we who celebrate the birth of St. Agnes into eternal joy be loyal to the faith she professed. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. While the armies were coming home, when David returned from killing the Philistine, the women came out of all the towns of Israel, singing and dancing, to meet King Saul with tambourines, with songs of joy, and with musical instruments. And the women sang to one another as they made merry, Saul has killed his thousands, and David his ten thousands. Saul was very angry, for this saying displeased him. He said, they have ascribed to David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed thousands. What more can he have but the kingdom? So Saul eyed David from that day on. Saul spoke with his son Jonathan and with all his servants about killing David. But Saul's son Jonathan took great delight in David. Jonathan told David, My father Saul is trying to kill you. Therefore, be on guard tomorrow morning. Stay in a secret place and hide yourself. I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where you are, and I will speak to my father about you. If I learn anything, I will tell you. Jonathan spoke well of David to his father Saul, saying to him, The king should not sin against his servant David, because he has not sinned against you, and because his deeds have been of good service to you. For he took his life in his hand, when he attacked the Philistine, and the Lord brought about a great victory for all Israel. You saw it and rejoiced. Why then will you sin against an innocent person by killing David without cause? Saul heeded the voice of Jonathan. Saul swore, as the Lord lives, he shall not be put to death. So Jonathan called David and related all these things to him. Jonathan then brought David to Saul, and he was in his presence as before. The word of the Lord.
enemies trample on me all day long for many fight against me count of my tossings put my tears in your bottle are they not in your record that my enemies will retreat in the day when I call in God I trust I know that God is for me in God whose word I praise in the Lord whose word I praise in God I trust I am not afraid what can a mere mortal do to me in God I trust, I am not afraid. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Savior Jesus Christ has done away with death and brought us life through the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed with his disciples to the sea, and a great multitude from Galilee followed him. Hearing all that he was doing, they came to him in great numbers from Judea, Jerusalem, Idumea, beyond the Jordan, and the region around Tyre and Sidon. Jesus told his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd, so that they would not crush him. For he had cured many, so that all who had diseases pressed upon him to touch him. Whenever the unclean spirits saw Jesus, they fell down before him and shouted, You are the Son of God. But he sternly ordered them not to make him known. The Gospel of the Lord. 